Okay, so now let's do another one of these examples. So again, we have the exact same circuit. The circuit doesn't change. Well, only the, I mean, the, the, the calculation changes. And that's, uh, well, helpful. I mean, practice in many cases makes perfect. But of course, you need to know how much you practice more than more than enough. It's not really required. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the same circuit, which is essentially this circuit over here. And I have basically, um, I have basically a, a, a trans, a, a resistor over here that goes to this, to this switch. And then there is, there is another resistor that goes to ground. And then this goes to the positive rail, right? So this is V of S positive. And that is basically 10 volts. If I'm not mistaken, it's 10 volts. And this is V of S negative. Then what we have here is that this goes to the base of a transist transistor. And of course the emitter goes to the ground. The connector goes to a resistor and goes to the positive rail. From this point, which is essentially the collector voltage of this transistor, you basically you give this to, to another to another transistor here. And again, this transistor, the, the emitter goes to the ground and then the collector goes to a uh, basically uh, through a resistor goes to the positive rail and that's basically your whole circuit here, right? So that's basically the situation that we have here and you have a switch over here that you can put on position put set to position A or position B. Now we said that basically now in one of these in, 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 in essentially your goal basically of creating this this the circuit is that in one of these positions, this, let's just call this transistor Q1, for example, let's call this Q2. And I'm going to call these resistors R1, R1, R2, R3, and R4. And so, so that your, 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 your basically your, your whole goal of, of, of creating this circuit is not a very, not a very clever one, but essentially through these examples, you learn how to design circuits and how to do, how, essentially how to do design and how to do calculation. That's, that's all that, that this kind of thing is, is meant for. Otherwise, um, if you think about, for example, this R4 as, as some load over here that you can turn on and off using this switch, of course, you wouldn't need two transistors for that. And um, there are better ways of doing this. Uh, of course, in most cases, you can, you can just simply use the switch and the load itself and the power supply without any transistors in most cases, of course. In some cases, it's, it's necessary to use a transistor but essentially now this, this whole circuit, the, 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 the purpose of that is that when you, when you set your switch to, to A, to, to position A, you can see that this transistor is on. When this tra transistor is on, that means that then you have no voltage here. Now, of course, we have, we have talked about basically all of these in the previous videos. So I'm, kind of basically cutting down on, on explanation, meaning that uh, essentially this whole playlist uh, has to be watched in, in like, like in, a, in a series and, and, and that essentially helps me to not talk unnecessarily too much. Whenever I need to say something, of course I say it, but, but if I have said something about, for example, the same type of circuit in the previous video, then of course I, I, I will not talk about it here that much anymore. 
So essentially, then basically, that when when this when this switch is is set to position A, this this transistor is turned on, and when this is turned on, then then this voltage over here goes to zero. That means that then, then this transistor gets no voltage, and uh, uh, basically, uh, that means that this transistor is then turned off, and and then this this resistor gets no current, right? So that means that in, in position A, you essentially have Q2 is off. And in the other position, position B, your Q2 is on. That's basically the whole situation here. Now about the, about the, basically the values of these, of these, uh, of these, the values that we have for this, for this, for this exercise, we have R4 is equal to 10 ohms, is equal to 10 ohms, and we have beta 1, which is basically the beta of this transistor here, Q1, is 50, and our beta 2 is equal to 20. That's basically all the information that we have, right? Now our goal, basically what we want to do is we want to calculate the value of R3, R1, and R2. R1, R2, and R3. So let's see how we can calculate that. So, so essentially when you, when you, when you, when you turn this, this, when you, when you, when you turn the switch, when you turn, when you turn on the switch, when you, meaning that when you set it to, to, to position A, uh, transistor Q1 is supposed to be turned on, right? If this is supposed to be turned on, then, then essentially what happens is that you have to, um, you have to basically, you have to, 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 Create this this circuit in such a way that that the transistor is turned on and um, there is a specific kind of current that uh, that has to go through that has to go through basically Q1 basically right now I'll show you basically a way that doesn't work uh, I'm going to show you some some way of solving this problem that does not work and so that you don't make that mistake again, meaning that essentially what you need to do is that you need to start from this point in the circuit and not from, from, from the beginning. If you start from the very beginning, you, from the beginning, you will not be able to solve the problem. So, but now, now I'm going to show you why it does, why, why that, why that doesn't work. I mean, many people would, 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 would try to, to make the same mistake. So, if I want to turn this transistor on, you can see that this 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 is tied to this to this transistor over here as well. And suppose that I want to turn this transistor on, so I set the switch to, to position A, and then there has to be some current over here through R1 that goes to ground through emit to, through the emitter of this transistor. And in order to know what sort of current you need over here, you need to know how, what sort of current you need over here, right? Because, because you know that I of C to I of B is essentially equal to beta. And you need to know first your I of C over here to, and you know the value of beta over here for this transistor to calculate your I of B. So I of B, you cannot calculate it unless you have your I of C. Now, in order to know your I of C, you need to know basically what, uh, um, what, uh, basically what sort of current over here would turn this transistor on, right? Actually, what I'm saying actually might work. Let's see if that works. I have never actually tried this before, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm suspecting that, that it would, that it, that it would not work. So to know basically this current over here, so essentially you have a, you have this resistor over here and there is the supply up here. And then you can imagine that, that, that basically the whole supply is supposed to be dropped across this, across this, this resistor, right? Which means that I can, I can basically apply the Ohm's law to this resistor over here and write V is equal to IR. 
and if this this voltage is supposed to be 10 volts and the current I'm going to to calculate and the resistance is is basically uh, I don't know what the resistance is and as you can see I cannot solve the problem this way because I have two unknowns here right so I'm starting from this from this side of the circuit you cannot solve the problem there is a specific way of solving this problem and that is if you start from this side and move to the move towards the left right so moving from here what what you can do is that you can you can imagine that you want to turn this transistor on right so this becomes your base collect your base resistor and this becomes your collector resistor you know already how to do that because if you have a transistor over here that that basically a an npn transistor you essentially tie this tie this up to to ground tie this up to to basically to to v of s positive and uh, you put a resistor over here for the collector and you know how to turn this on um, basically there is this collector current over here i of c there is this base current over here i of b and um, you need to basically calculate what sort of current you need here and then based on that you can use the the, the, the beta basically the beta um, formula in order to calculate this current over here and then you can you can calculate everything so we so we already know how to do this so doing the exact same thing uh, so in order for this transistor to be turned on this q2 to be turned on what I'm going to do is that, of course, the whole voltage is supposed to be dropped across R4. So if I, if I apply basically the Ohm's law to R4, I have V is equal to IR, right? I have V is equal to IR and the voltage across this resistor is supposed to be 10 volts. And the current over here, I don't know what that is, so I, I, I take it as the current. And I had, I had to basically start from this side of the circuit essentially because I know the value of this R4 over here, which is 10 ohm. Right? So this is, this is 10 ohm. And so this tells me that I is the same thing as 10 volt divided by 10 ohm, which is the same thing as 1 amp. Okay, so now basically I know that the I know that basically the collector current for this for this the basically for this transistor is supposed to be one amp, right? So I say that I I I, I call this for example something like for example I three. I call this 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 current I call it I two and I call this current over here I one, right? So so I know that basically I3 is supposed to be equal to 1 amp, right? And if that is the case, if that is the case, then then essentially um, by, I know basically, if I write basically I of C to I of B is equal to beta, then basically I can calculate I of 2, which is, which is basically the current uh, required for required for for basically for the base of this transistor i know that basically the collector current is i of 3 and i of 3 is equal to 1 amp so i can write 1 amp divided by i of b is the same thing as beta and the beta of this transistor is beta 2 which is equal to 20. so so that means that 20 times i of b is the same thing as 1 amp and that means that I of B is basically 1 amp divided by 20, which is 1 20th of an amp, which is 1 tenth would be, one, half of 1 tenth is 5 tenth, I suppose, right? No, 5 hundredth, right? 
is 507 amp, I suppose. 1 divided by 20 is equal to 500, right? 0 0.05 is equal to 0 0.05 amp. So that means that this, this base, this base current, I of 2, is supposed to be equal to 0 0.05 amp. So that's basically, that, that's what we know now. Next, what we need to do is that, is that we need to uh, basically calculate the, of course, this current is basically controlled by this resistor over here. So if I, if I basically apply the ohms law to this resistor V is equal to IR, what I will have is that the, 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 the voltage across this resistor is the supply voltage. You can see that the voltage goes through the resistor to the base emitter junction of the transistor to ground. So if I ignore this, this voltage drop over here, which is 0 0.7 volts, then essentially the whole supply voltage is across this resistor, which means that um, basically I take this, this voltage as 10 volts and the current is essentially I of 2, which is 0 0.05 amps times R3 times R3 and that means that R3 is the same thing as 10 volts divided by 0 0.05 amps divide multiply both numerator and denominator by factor of 100 you'll get 1000 divided by 5 and 1000 divided by 5 is the same thing as uh, uh, 200 right 200 200 ohm 1000 divided by 5 is equal to 200 ohm so uh, that's volt to amp is equal to 200 ohm that means that your r3 the value of r3 is supposed to be equal to 200 200 ohm next what you need to do next what you need to do is is calculate the now now what you now what you want to do is that you want to turn you want to turn q1 on you want to turn this q1 on and to turn this on what you want to do is is um, you know that you know that you already know the collector current which is i2 you already have calculated that i2 is 0 0.05 amp so if i write the basic the i of c to i of b is equal to beta and I have C take it as this I2 over here, which is, which is 0 0.05 amp and divided by I of B. That gives me the beta of this transistor, which is Q1 is 50. That means that 50 times I of B is the same thing as 0 0.05 amp, which means that I of B is the same thing as 0 0.05 amp divided by 50 multiply by a hundred factor of hundred or divide by f divide by I don't know divide probably by t multiply by a hundred you'll get basically a five and five thousand and divide by five you'll get one divide by five you'll get a thousand so that's one thousandth of an amp 0 0.001 of an amp so that means that this 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 um, this 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 current over here, which is essentially I one, is is the same thing as zero point zero zero one of an amp, right? So next, what you will do is that is that you need to create this current in the in in the circuit, and the way that you do it is that by choosing the the right resistor here. The right resistor would be basically, you can see that the supply voltage is up here, comes through the resistor, goes through the switch, and comes to the base emitter junction of the transistor, goes to ground. That means that there is only this resistor and only this PN junction here. If I basically um, ignore the, uh, the, the base emitter junction voltage drop here, which is 0 0.7 volts, I can assume that the whole voltage is dropped across R1 and 
So if I write V is equal to I times R applied to R1, I will have basically the whole supply voltage is across here, so 10, 10 volts. And the, and the current through this is supposed to be 0 0.001 amp times R1. So that means that R1 is the same thing as 10 volts divided by 0 0.001 amp, which is the same thing as multiplied by a factor of 1000, you you'll get 10 zero 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 divided by one volt per amp is uh, ohm that's ten thousand ohm which is ten kilo ohm that's the value of this resistor over here so that means that r1 is supposed to be r1 is supposed to be ten kilo ohm and you can choose arbitrarily the same value for r2 as well there is no problem with that r2 is 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 ten kilo ohm as well right so now let me check the values of these resistors here and see what we get the value of these resistors this is question number five in the book and r3 is 200 ohms which is correct r1 is 10 kilo ohm which is correct and R2 is 10 kilo ohm, which is correct. And these are the values that you should use for this circuit to work. And again, I, I, I repeat this, I mean, uh, uh, including me, almost everybody is uh, looking, I mean, or, might, or might be looking for a book on electronic circuit design. And this book does not exist. I have been looking for this it does not exist so what you need to do in order if you want to basically learn circuit design and if you have some experience with with some proper some prior experience with electronics so what you need to do and you don't want to do an a, a course for example and and a three four year course engineering course on electronics you need to do this on your own but but then there is as i was reading on one of the one of the prefaces on one of the one, one of one of the basic chapters on on the art of electronics there is no logical way or there is no definitive way to do that there is actually no way to do that except that you go and take the four year basic engineering electronics and electrical engineering course or something like that not very practical at least today in the world i mean what, what would you do with an engineering degree um, there is of course a whole lot of things to do with that but well sometimes you can't afford to do that but if you still want to do want to learn electronic design what you can do is that you can find a good book that that teaches you basically these kinds of things for example how to design a circuit how to do the calculation and how to do all of these things related to uh, a very simple circuit for example containing a couple of resistors a couple of transistors and that's it right and well as you as you work through for example this book over here that i introduced in the previous video as well and i hope that and i think i it's not there anymore if you if you get your hands on on this book over here which is let me show you the book one more time so this is for example the book that i found very helpful really helpful can take a picture of this book and, 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 and get it on Amazon. Through this book, you, you will be able to um, essentially um, find all of the necessary information in order to get started on, 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 on calculation and design and that sort of thing. And um, well, if there is any, any, anything that you need to know, for example, from basic physics, uh, you can always, for example, go over here to um, 
you can always go over here to for example uh, you can go to openstacks for example dot org any basic physics course would do you can go to science for example over here and you can see that there is this book over here called physics not university physics but uh, college physics i suppose college physics this is high school physics college physics over here uh, it seems that they have actually created this book over here i didn't know about this so you can you can you can you can always find some book like this for example this book you can you can you can download free of cost it's a it's a, it's a great book you can download the book over here and once you download it you have all of these chapters over here you can see that you will get all of these chapters on and what is that oh, not right now so you have basically the uh, this is on basically for example on approximation um, the number of significant figures measurement and that sort of thing and you have basically all of these um, concepts of physics like the, the like force and and newton's laws and and circular motion gravitation work energy and that sort of thing um, and then over here um, i'm not really sure if these would be very much related to electronics but but for example you can start from for example you can start from this this chapter over here and these chapters are not that complicated anybody can read these chapters um, oscillatory motion and waves and waves for example physics of hearing these are related to electronics electric charge and electric field and then electric potential and charge uh, an electric field and electric current resistance ohm's law circuits and dc instrument magnetism ac circuits electromagnetic waves and uh, geometric optics these are also well related to electronics of course if you provided that you do specific kind of things related to optics and waves and that sort of thing which is not exactly what i'm doing right now but but essentially any any sort of basically uh, introductory physics course like this you can read this as well and then you have to put the whole thing together and that becomes a complete course on electronics and and even if you take i mean i can i mean i have been uh, i mean you we all we, we we all know how a how a how a basically a, a classical basic course on electronics three four year course that you would attend how that works if you really care about for example learning electronics and and if you do if you want to do something with that of course it's always better to do it on your own i mean um, attending school is of course always a very good idea but on the other hand you end up basically um you end up um, well um, you end up essentially losing a whole lot of resources like time like money and you would get you would be confined to some rules and regulations and everything like that but this way you can essentially do the whole thing on your own and it's not that complicated the whole thing might take you for example a, a year or 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 two but then you will you will end up being a um, an educated for example um, a well educated basically um, a well educated person that knows well about certain areas of electronics of course and then there is of course all of the other things that 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 are available in the world of electronics for example there is the book the art of electronics that that you can that you can read for example once you've gone through this book then you can start reading about and then you can start reading the art of electronics and over there you will get all of the 
goodies of electronics, meaning that the, all of the good circuits that work and all of the um, practical schematics and everything that, 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 that basically go with that. Okay, so I'm not going to, I, I mean, so I suppose I'm done with this type of circuit with two transistors. So now what I will do is that I will do an, at least one more example using basically doing three, have a circuit having three transistors, a, 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 a similar type of thing having three transistors. So I'll see you in the next video and thank you.